Good morning and welcome to everyone here in worship this morning. My name is Alex Bars. Um, obviously, if you know me, you know I'm a talker. Not much of a public speaker, though, but we're going to struggle through it today. So, um, announcements. Uh, Joe and Alicia Burmeister welcomed a daughter, Nora, this past week on Saturday, Saturday July 22nd. Um, she has joined her brothers, Henry and Dale, at home. Um, that is the only announcement I have unless someone else has any announcements. Speak now. No more announcements. Okay. Well, we will um, begin worship today here um, with confession and forgiveness. So. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Oh, in, in the presence of God and our neighbors. Merciful God, confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us. Grant us the mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. We'll now sing hymn 533.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community, uh, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, purchase us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 5 through 12. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept him this great and steadfast love, 
and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. Although I am only a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between what good and evil, for who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. The psalm is Psalm 119 and will be read responsively. Your decrees are wonderful. Therefore, I obey them with all my heart. I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Order my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Let your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. The second reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, he will not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charges against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us, who will separate us from the love of Christ, will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Please stand for the gospel.
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then, in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous, and then throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all of this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. Here ends the gospel. Okay, you're lucky enough to have me here today, but I'm not going to give you a sermon, so you're not that lucky. Um, but I do have a brief message here before we watch the video sermon. Um, uh, here we are three years later, and although the coronavirus may not be part of our daily conversations, there are core messages in this sermon that still apply today. As a congregation searching for our next pastor, pastor we face different challenges from those of 2020. Our challenge for today was what to do when a visiting pastor wasn't available this week. That's why you got me. Um, our council president, Bob Hansen, is doing a remarkable job filling our Sunday schedule, and until today, most of our Sunday services have included an in-person pastor-delivered sermon. But when that is not possible, um, you know, over the last few years here, we've kind of relied on technology, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to have a video sermon, um, and then we'll continue worship. So. Hello, greetings from Bishop Kevin Strickland and the entire Southeastern Synod. I am Pastor Michael Jeanette, Assistant to the Bishop for Formation and Communication here in the Southeastern Synod. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good into baskets, but 
threw out the bad, so it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace, into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? said Jesus. They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of the Lord. So I have a bad memory. Just ask my wife or my kids or my extended family. It's a wonder I can function in this world sometimes. But I have been reminded over and over again of the simple joy of rediscovering beautiful stories in this world, of re-noticing things that I have already witnessed. But it can also be frustrating, right, to myself and to others. For when I forget how I did something, then I have to recreate the process. When I forget someone's name or a significant event in their life, it's like I have to kind of start over with that person or that family. You know, we establish norms and ways and then things we take for granted so that we can then get more and more efficient and we can move from not knowing to knowing and then to expertise. And once we we become an expert, we have little desire to look at the process with fresh eyes. Once we reach expert level, we want to level up even more and we start to care less about the process right? Just that we enforce the process. We show less care about someone because we don't let them retell their story. Maybe something else happened in their life that they need to catch us up so we can hear with fresh ears. Or maybe we get so caught up in the way that we do worship or singing or confirmation that we fail to reimagine until something forces us to reimagine. So what's the effect Well, we lose the gift of wonder. Now, can you be an expert and still wonder? Well, yes, you can. But the wonderment is quite often lost on us. We find a way, a path, and we see that as the only way forward. Right? We hear someone's story and we don't let them update their story. We just rely on their past. We don't tell them, we don't allow them to tell us of new beginnings in their lives. In about my fifth year as a pastor, I began a journey of intentional discipleship with colleagues across the U.S. And in that journey, my eyes were open to many things. Yes, I had learned at seminary how to read and interpret scripture and visit folks and do pastoral care. But much of what I was left with was how to wonder and to seek God and the gospel in the ordinary days and in my ordinary life. I got stuck in interpreting Greek and Hebrew and I lost the wonder of what those words meant to me, what those words meant in my life or in my community. I didn't wonder what my place was in God's reign in the midst of the kingdom of heaven. Now I could explain who Jesus was, but I had a hard time explaining who Jesus is to me. Now, I'm not just about preaching me and Jesus, like we're all parts of the same body of Christ, but each part has to kind of discern how they fit into the larger body, how they are gifted. We all began 2020 with great intentions, with seemingly great systems and events in place, and we were all significantly sidetracked. Where we normally sought Jesus, a worship in a building, or a Bible study, or a book study, or a retreat, that all shifted completely and totally. Even service to our community looks different nowadays, with cleaning standards and safety controls more and more in place and more and more of a concern. So church leaders turn to online worship and learning, right? We've been forced to seek God outside of the church building. I know, go figure. 
that tends to be troublesome for us since we are not used to finding what a work Jesus has done in us apart from the organized church. We're left wondering, flailing about sometimes. Now, those, that discipleship group I was a part of early in my time as a pastor, it has allowed me to be shaped in such a way that I am curious as to what God is up to when things don't seem ordinary. I'm used to asking more questions and to be more curious how God might be working in a new way in me this day. And I think that's a little bit of what Jesus is getting at when he talks to the crowd about the kingdom of heaven and through parables tells them what the kingdom of heaven is like. Now, the kingdom of heaven wasn't necessarily a new concept to the world. People who followed God expected God to show up, but maybe not in the way Jesus was talking about. They were used to seeing God in the temple, God in the reading of the word. And yes, God is in those places. But as folks were interpreting the law, they lost the wonderment. They left it up to the experts to figure out what God was up to. And they stopped being curious about where God is showing up in new ways. As I think about my own challenges in remembering things and turning that into a bit of a positive in terms of seeing things anew, I think of Jesus telling these people, that they are to look at the law, God's word, in new ways. Right? One who was a scribe was one who would help interpret the law, understand the interpretation of the law, that they would take the old and the new. Jesus is telling them to look at the law in new ways. Right? Maybe moving away from some established interpretations, that they might take a fresh look at what God was saying to God's people and to the world. And so too, I think in this time, Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, is beckoning us into a new understanding of what it means to simply be the church. I know one big question floating out there is, how do we handle, say, confirmation? Right? Talk about something in need of reform. Well, confirmation is <clears throat> not going to be the regular gathering that it was. It might be on Zoom. But what about changing the paradigm for learning while keeping the same vision? Right, We want to pass on the faith to our younger folks. What about confirmation in the home? What does that look like? Maybe challenging our older family members, whether it be parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, or just older siblings, to help learn alongside their younger kin. After all, that's what Martin Luther wrote the small catechism for, that it might be used in the home to teach one another and to learn from one another. Worship is different, right? But how so? Are we trying to recreate temple worship again? Just over Zoom? Are we equipping our people to do worship in the home? Can it be both and? How does all that happen? These are the questions we face. Now the changes we see may not seem helpful or useful in this time, but I want you to think about the kingdom of heaven that Jesus talks about, where it shows up, the small and meager means from which a bountiful fruitfulness might come. The kingdom of heaven, found in something the size of a mustard seed, something insignificantly small, maybe found in just a few ounces of yeast, but said, spread throughout pounds and pounds of flour, such a meager start, but with lasting effect. Maybe simply lighting a candle in the home, as you have conversation or prayer to remind you of Christ's presence with you, maybe sharing highs and lows with your family around the coffee table. And what is the cost that Jesus speaks of in, this, in these parables? The cost will be great. And we will move from old ways of discovering God's grace and blazing new trails in a time such as this. Without singing in the congregation's building, without coffee or donuts in the fellowship hall. Instead, we will learn new ways of doing worship around the coffee table, 
and by singing along while the band or organist plays a tune as we cast worship to the living room television, or maybe as you watch it in your PJs or on your tablets and phones. The new and the old together, with a very wide net cast out there, so that all kinds of people can come together. That's what the kingdom of heaven is like. The grace we receive from God allows us to gather people from all over to share grief with one another, to be advocates for racial, racial justice in these days, and to learn from one another across vast, differences, uh, vast distances, even in the midst of this pandemic. This kingdom of heaven stuff is surprising us all of the time. That even in the midst of a pandemic, God is somehow still with us, still surprising us, still calling us to give so much of ourselves. In this time, we still give to the church, to the organizations that hurt so much. Right? Not only does my family give time and money to our congregational home and to our synod, but we are able to donate, thankfully, half of our registration fees back to Lutheridge this summer as they canceled summer camp. Right? And no, not three, and not, none of the three of our kids could attend camp this summer there. And we feel the pain now of yet another event postponed as the ELCA Youth Gathering now moves from summer 2021 to summer 2022 then the challenges facing that organizational group, right? The challenges facing the youth and, and the congregations across the ELCA wondering what's next here. But I love the tagline from the youth gathering. The theme is boundless, but with this new updated change, I like how they plastered the phrase, new dates, same boundless God. That is truth. On Wednesday, July 29th, I'm going to be one of over 70 folks making phone calls to ask former campers through the Novus Way Ministries about their camp stories. And I will invite them to tune in to Novus Way's camp campaign on social media on July 29th. I invite you to tag in as well. On that evening, those people that I will call will have the opportunity to give to camp in a special appeal. For camp is yet another thing that looks different in 2020. No campers were on site for any of Novus Way's four sites of Luther Ridge, Luther Rock, Luther Ranch, or Luther Springs. But God's grace still exists. God still wants us to be in community, and sharing stories will help us to get there and call us, calls us to respond with our financial gifts. And so, as you live into this odd season of our history, May you make the most of small beginnings, of God's kingdom rediscovered as with new eyes. Maybe that is a new practice for you of reading the Bible on your own or with loved ones. Maybe the inbreaking of God's kingdom will look like a financial gift on your behalf when you couldn't do that before. Or maybe that means you just simply walk around your neighborhood and you're able to pray with or for your neighbors. May you embrace the cost of the kingdom of heaven as you bring forth the new with the old. May you be surprised time and time again about how God can do so much with our small acts of love and kindness and generosity. May God stir in you the gifts of grace and hope and wonder this day. Amen.
Please stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in Jesus, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Almighty God, we pray for the church and servants of the gospel, equip, rostered, and lay ministers to proclaim that nothing can separate us from the love of God and Jesus Christ. Form confirmads into disciples. Hear us, O God. Gracious God, we pray for the well-being of creation, safeguard the environment, clean polluted rivers and lakes, preserve the mighty tree and the tiny mustard seed, and send advocates for sustainable practices. Hear us, O God. Compassionate God, we pray for all nations, instill in all who govern the ability to discern between good and evil, free those who are oppressed, and protect those facing danger. Promote peace across the world and in our towns and neighborhoods. Hear us, O God. Merciful God, we pray for all in need. Protect those fleeing from war, shelter any who are in poverty. Clothe the naked, soothe all who grieve, and heal the sick. Especially um, Mark, Kate, Norm, Moni, Chris, uh, Jim, and Rich. Hear us, O God. Holy God, we pray for this congregation, both those gathered today and those absent from our assembly. We also pray for St. Peter Lutheran Church of Green as they continue their search for a full-time pastor. Grant safety to travelers and refresh grant safety to travelers and refreshment and safety for children attending summer camps or community programs. Give direction to any experiencing life transitions. Hear us, O oh God. Eternal God, we give thanks to you. We give thanks for your saints who now rest from their labors. Inspire us by the, their witness to treasure the gospel and continually nourish us with your grace. Hear us, O oh God. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all from whom we pray in the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Uh, now join me, please, in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Uh, we'll now share the peace and receive our offering. And you can be seated.
please stand as we sing the offering hymn. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of age. Amen. You now can be seated as we sing our sending hymn, Sent Forth by God's Blessing. Go in peace, share the harvest. Thanks be to God. 